Right, so today I'm going to show you this very very cool card trick. All you're going to need are two decks of cards and at this point I'm going to see the performance really quick and show you guys what it looks like. So let's say you have the spectator, you tell them, alright, pick whatever deck you want. In this case, let's say they were to pick this deck over here. So you tell the spectators, okay, so you can go ahead and pick um, any two cards from this deck. Just make sure that between 2 and 10, we just want you to pick, um, you know, cards with numbers on them, values. So in this case, let's say the spectator goes through the deck and they were to pick an 8, for example, and let's say they were to pick a 3. So pretty random cards. Um, and then what we're going to use as well is this little double back card and you'll see why in, um, in, in a second. So let's put this deck out of the way and now we have this deck left off over here. So at this point what you would do is you would tell your spectators, okay, so essentially we're going to be dealing with the number uh, 13 and we're going to see how lucky um, we can get using the number 13. So it's pretty simple. What you do is you take your three cards and what you're going to do is essentially add them up from 13. So in this case, let's say we have three, so you would do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that's all you're doing. So the spectator picked whatever cards they wanted um, from the deck. You know, they just happened to be between two and ten. We'll do the same exact thing with the eight. You go ahead and you take this. So you go eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You put that back down on the table. And the whole part about picking the double back card is the fact that you're going to basically have the spectator from this point pick the value for this card. So the same exact thing, you know, you have the choice in the other deck to pick the cards between 2 and 10. This time I truly want you to think of any number 2 to 10, or, you know, whatever value you want this to be. So in this case, let's say the spectator was to say 4. So let's say they thought, you know, this card was going to be a 4, right? So you have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, you put that card on the table, and now you go and you square everything up, and then again, you can tell your spectators, listen, you have the other deck in your hands, all right? You picked whatever cards you wanted between 2 to 10, I didn't have any choice in what cards you picked, you picked them face up, and then you chose that random value, I think it was 4, and from here, you guys, you can snap your fingers, you can spread the deck, and every single time, as you guys can see here, we have, there's the 3, you pick whatever value, that ended up sharing this card. Let's see what the eight's doing over there. And we pull out the last card, which you said was a four. You can square this deck up over here. And as you guys can see, you pull the cards out. These are the values the spectator chose, and it just so happened to land each one on an ace, right? But there's four aces in the deck, so we still need to find the last ace. And this is where this trick gets really, really cool. Um, the spectator chose the three and the eight, and then they chose the four as well. So what you're going to do is add up the values of the cards. So we have 3, 8, that's 11, and then we have 4, so we have 15 cards. 15 cards down from this deck right here, as you guys can see, we're going to find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, guys. 15 cards down from the bottom of the deck. We will have the last fourth and final ace. And that is the trick. It will work every single time. And if you guys want to learn how to do it, do not forget to stick around for the tutorial. All right, guys. So here's how you can actually do the trick. So it's um, it's self-working, and it will, like I said, it was it's going to work every time if it's self-working. Now, what you do need to do is get a hold of a deck of cards in your house that happens to have 52 cards. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the four aces out of the deck, and here's how you got to set up the deck. So you take two aces. You put two of the aces and you leave those on top of the deck. And then you take the other two aces. One's going to go on the bottom. And then one is going to go in the 14th position down from the bottom. So you count the ace. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And in the 14th position, you're going to have another ace. So 14 down from the bottom, you have an ace. And then you have an ace on the bottom as well, and then you have two on top. Now this is going to be the deck that has 52 cards in it, and then the other deck is just a random deck. And then if you want, you can either pull a joker, or I happen to have this double back card, which looks kind of cool. Spectators don't really see these a lot, and they don't really know what they're for, so it's not a big deal. This deck actually happened to come with it. It was the Magic Carpet deck, so if you guys are interested, that's what it's called. But um, it's pretty interesting. Anyways, all you have to do is, like I said, if, as long as you have this set up in one of the decks, you're good to go. This one doesn't matter because they're going to pick random cards. 
and you just want to have a joker or you know in this case just a weird card that you can basically label whatever because that's how the ending of the trick actually happens so at this point what you're going to do is give the spectators the option to pick between two decks so essentially you're giving them more power it looks like you know they have more control over it but you're just doing a magician's force regardless you're going to end up having them choose two cards from the deck on the left and then the cards are the deck they have the setup on obviously you don't want them to touch so um, it works better if you do have the boxes as well because then it kind of looks like you haven't tampered with anything it looks like you just kind of grabbed it off the shelf or something um, but if you don't have the boxes not a big deal let's just say you give the spectators the option to pick between both these decks in the performance it was really easy because i just had them pick the deck i wanted to so if they were to pick the deck that you're going to have them choose the cards from you say, okay, so pick between one of these decks, and they say, okay, let's say they pick this one, they're going to go, okay, go ahead and pick two cards from here. And then, you know, let's say they were to pick this one. So what you'll say to the spectator is, all right, so we're going to use this one for the trick. Um, just for right now, just go ahead and pick two cards from this pile. So either way, it's just, you know, you basically force them to use, you know, the deck over here. And what you do is you tell them to pick two cards um, from two to ten. So you say, all right, so just leave out any cards with faces on it. Just pick number of cards because we got to use numbers for the trick. So whatever you want to tell the spectators. Um, and what you do is, it doesn't really matter. They can pick whatever cards they want. So let's say they were to pick a six and a nine. All right, so two random numbers. And um, like I said, guys, from between two to ten, they got to be face cards. And then what you do is say, okay, so we're also going to use a third card. In this case, I'm going to show you guys. You say, all right, so look, this one will make a little more sense later on, but you kind of leave that with that deck, and then you don't need to use the other deck anymore. All right, so I know that I said this is self-working, and it is, but there is a little bit of slight to it. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure most of you guys can do this, but for any beginners out there, all you have to do is you pick up the three cards. So the spectator has chosen the six, the nine, and then you've given them this little random card at the bottom. So once you have all these cards laid out, just make sure that the bottom card of this three card packet is the double backed or you know, whatever card you're using, maybe like a joker or something. And you have that layout like this where that card doesn't matter which how these are arranged, just make sure the double backer is on the bottom. And then what you're doing is as you're kind of just showing these cards to the spectator and you tell them, okay, so we're going to use the number 13 and we're going to see if that happens to be our lucky number today. And all you're doing while you're saying that is you're pushing over the top card with your thumb like this. You're pushing it over just a little bit. And then as you pull it back, you're going to catch a pinky break just above the top card. It's very slight and the back here is not going to really see anything. So what you do is say, okay, so we're going to count up from 13. And what you do is you put this entire three card packet onto the break. So now you have three cards and you pick it up. And now you should have these four cards and you've stolen one of the aces. So it's very simple. You just pick it up from the break and you say, okay, so, so we're going to count up to 13, all right? So we're going to see how lucky we get. So we have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And you put the entire four card packet back on the deck. Slide off the 9. Put the rest of the deck back on top. All right, so then you can square everything back up and do the same exact process. So you pull over the cards. But this time, you know, you're not actually, you don't have to do any sort of pinky break or anything. You just pull off the top cards just like this. You know, you have the six in the joker and you say, all right, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 11, 12, 13. Put the six down, square everything back up top, and you can pick the deck up and do it one more time. This time you pull off that double backer or the joker. And again, you're not doing just like the last motion. You're not pulling off any cards, doing any pinky breaks. You pull out the single card and you say, all right, so you give the, the spectator the option to pick any number between 2 and 10. And that's why this is so cool, just because, you know, they can really pick any number um, that they want to at this point. And it's just kind of like, you know, instead of just picking a card physically, they can just think of it. And let's say they were to pick a card like 5, right? So some random number like 5. So you have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Place your card in there, you shove everything here, and at this point, you can just spread the deck, and the moment you spread the cards, you want to make sure that the spectator can see everything, and you pull the cards over, and you show them, and you grab the card that's directly above each of their selections. In this case, they have the 9, you're going to pull the card that's directly on top of it. You can pull that out. Same thing with the 6. Pull the card that's directly on top of it, and then you do the same exact thing with the Joker or the uh, double backer and you 
square the cards back up in the same exact order and you can show the spectators okay so look you know you you emphasize to them that you know they picked any cards they wanted from the deck granted they were two to ten and then they made up their own value over there with this random card and each one of those cards will find an ace and then you tell them okay so let's go ahead and find the uh, the fourth ace so what you do is you add up the values so you do six plus nine is fifteen plus five is twenty so you know whatever value they chose for their random card you're just gonna add that in so like I said we have twenty so you'll count down nineteen cards and the next card will be there so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen 19 next card is going to be the last fourth final ace guys and this is the trick it'll work every time as long as you have a deck with 52 cards and you stack the aces just the way i described and um it's a pretty neat trick you know especially for beginners you don't have to do anything except for maybe one pinky uh one pinky break that you push off with your thumb but it's really not too bad guys and uh, as long as you have two decks it'll work best of luck and as always Thanks for watching.